from Intelligent Concrete and today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of packaging samples before sending them. Um, we here at Intelligent Concrete have a lot of clients who send us cores or different samples to test and we have seen um, everything from beautifully packaged samples that come in, in quality condition to the other end of the spectrum of samples that have literally um, been knocked around enough where they've broken and are just absolutely um, unable to use them. So uh, today we are just gonna discuss how we do it and some of the options that are out there. group has a really good sample submission um, form that really gives uh, the clients all of the information that is necessary to put on here as well as who they're sending it to so that there's no questions asked when things arrive. Um, it includes sample ID type of material and then the tests that they're requesting. So if you're finding that you are receiving samples without that information, that necessary information clearly stated, a submission form requiring uh, clients to send that with those samples might be a good idea. But otherwise, let's just start from the beginning of labeling, the importance of labeling. Um, so again, maybe people don't understand why this is so necessary, but in your lab, you know what you're doing or your company, you know what you're making. Once it gets out your doors, nobody, you know, it's a guessing game. So really writing, um, writing down the mix ID, um, if there's certain admixtures or something special that's in that mix, that's also good information to include. The cast date is great. Um, and then clearly labeling different, uh, the different mixes, you know, if it's three different batches within one mix design, numbering that appropriately. So when it gets to that other side, there's no questions um, and your test will be done um, clearly. So what we like to do here at Intelligent Concrete is if we are sending samples, we'll use a box like this. This is a large one, but a box like this with foam, um, some heavy thick foam, foam, and then we just cut out the, the size of the samples out of that foam so that once we put those in there, um, it's it keeps the it kind of climate control, keeps everything standard as far as wh what temp uh, the samples are at. Um, it doesn't allow them to hit each other or knock around. And then after those are packed in a box like this, we'll top it with more foam and then make sure there's no gappage um, on the top. Gappage a word? No gaps on the top that um, allow movement for those samples. So. 
another great way to do it is if you're doing sending cores and you are unable to do it this way um, packing them in like five gallon buckets works but putting padding down and then filling sand around it so that it really becomes secure because we don't know who's you know what carrier is is um, what their process is either if they're throwing things around you know and then again labeling it appropriately so that the carrier does know you know fragile um, heavy those sort of things so there's no surprises once it leaves your door when it's in transit that um, that could damage lead to damaging the samples so that is what we suggest um, Again, having a form that just makes it very clear for the or for your client on what information you're needing and what you're requesting so that everybody is on the same page. I hope this video was helpful. Please feel free to comment and like. Ding the bell for notifications. Go concrete, beat asphalt.